is a mean or a spiteful manner. We do things spitefully to people sometimes. Well. And the word up rose from that was nasty. We got a filthy, indecent, up, obscene, a, a wickedly harmful and dangerous, mm. and you disagree on the word God. You know it's right, but you are disagreeing, trying to find some means of a justifying yourself. You got to come on up to the word. God is not going to accept your meanness and disagreeable spirit, and you're living dangerously on the edge. You're mean, ill-natured. You're unfair in your dealing. God is looking. And dirty, you play dirty tricks. You vex somebody's spirit. <clears throat> I'm a problem, you're unfair. And dirty, tricky, and nasty. Now, Uncle is talking about if my people turn from the wicked ways and humble themselves. Now, you manage you gotta be able to have a human uh, uncle spirit is the key to your anointing. If you want to be anointed, you got to humble yourself. You can't be keep on being nasty and ugly and treating people like dirt, like you, you think you just talk to them any kind of way. God, you got to have the same spirit of Jesus Christ. In order to carry his anointing, you got to humble yourself you, you to the very, very point where you are righteous from the bone. Because the word of God tells us, none but the righteous shall see God. Yes, none but the righteous. You come out of the way, you come as a thief and a robber. You can't no robber, no thief get into the kingdom of God. You gotta come right. You gotta get rid of that old man. If they say, leave it back in the old year and, and come on up and reposition yourselves in the word of God and do it right because Jesus is soon to come. He's picking out flowers for his flower God. You don't know the day not an hour. Neither do I know the day not an hour that he's coming, but he said he's coming. He plucked where he want to pluck. He plucked where he want to plant. When it's time to rebuke, he rebuke where he wants to rebuke. He knows what you're doing. He said the word. Amen. Let us be ready. Now, hunger and humility is the key to the anointing. Now, hunger is not proud. Some of us have a proud and a hearty and a high spirit. Well. Not pretentious. He's not making demands on something that you can't do, but when you can do it, he's looking for you to stand up to the word and stop trying to tell people how to live when you ain't there. Amen. We have this thing, we can say, hallelujah, praise the Lord, like nothing ever happened. But if you look in the closet, you'll see this skeleton falling down, it don't dry it up, no anointing, no way. You open the closet and out come a bunch of skeletons. You, you would jump yourself. Should be see what was on the inside of you. And it's not assuming. It's humbling. You assume you got to be humble and you got to be meek. It's not arrogant or high or proud. Meek is modest and lowly. To make humble is to Destroy the power of your prestige. Some of us so high and mighty, we think we all of that. But that's what weakness is. All right. Now, where are we stopping, Ellen? I'm going to go a little further. Now, this is how the pecan comes in. This word is broke down to you. Amen. And that means that you can chew it like a baby. All right. And chew it like a baby. Because it's broke down to you in little pieces that when you feed the baby, you don't cram a whole big spoonful in his mouth. You put a little bit on the spoon and let it 
eat it so it be nourishing right. to his bones and his body. Where we stop? At the, uh, yeah, the wicked, wicked, right? Yeah. Yes. Start back at that wicked way. Yeah. And turn from their wicked ways. And turn from their wicked ways. Yeah, go ahead. Then will I hear from heaven. Then he said he'll hear from heaven what he's going to do. And will forgive their sins. And he'll forgive you for whatever you've done and what he'll do. And will heal their land. He will heal your land. What is your land? Some of your land. He'll heal your marriage. He will heal your finance. He will heal your body. Glory to God. There's a lot of things. There are children, finance, and health. My people he talking to. Not the one that don't have called by his name. He, he want them to come and repent and then be saved. But first of all, we that are in the way they looking at us sometimes. We got to reposition ourselves in the word of God and stop acting like the devil act. And act like we are Christ. We are Christ-like. We are in his image. So we got to live like we are Christ is in the world. That the, the light through us that will shine in the dark world. That the man that don't know Jesus will know him. How about that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I thank you, Jesus. Go ahead and read. 15 verse. Now my eyes shall be open. He said, my eyes shall be open. And my ears attend. And my ears attend unto your cry. Uh -huh. Unto your prayer. When you cry down in prayer, his eyes, they open. He see you. He hear you. And unto the prayer, that is what? Made in this place. That is made in this place. Read. For now have I chosen. For now have I chosen. And sanctified this house. And sanctified this house. This is the house of prayer. But some of us have made a den of things. We come in and we do what we think we ought to do. Amen. And that's not right. You do what God tells us to do. Amen. Go ahead. And sanctified this house. He sanctified this house. Your house. Is the temple he talking about? You do not this building only, but you is the temple that you carry around the light of God. You said you are called by His name. Glory to God! You got to reposition yourself and turn around and do it right. So when Jesus comes, you will be able to get on cross that river. Read that my name that my name may be there. May be there. Forever. What verse you in? Still in 16 verses. Okay. Let me see that. My eyes and my heart shall there be there. Perpetual. That be con continually. My con he said, you are my concern. Your concern is my concern. Yes, Lord. That's what it really means. My, they said, my con continue. My concern, and the Holy Ghost brought it to me. My concern is his concern. Yes, if we can be concerned about us, we ought to be concerned about what he wants to do for us. Amen. We go along when things get well, we go on and we think we got it made. And after a while, he said, when you pull it, come over your head, and your feet go show. You can't hide from God. Read. Still 16 verse? No, 17. 17, okay. And as for thee, and as for thee, if thou wilt, if thou will, listen, listen to that guy. If thou will, walk before me. Walk before me, he said. As David. As David. Thy father walked. Thy father walked. And do according. And do according to all that. That all that I, I, have, commanded. I have commanded thee. Uh huh. You got to obey the commandments of the Lord, and that's the word. You can't change it and change it. He said. How you say about this? If you change my word, that'd be a curse, right? Amen, amen. So if you change God's word, you talk about curses gonna come up on you, and sometimes we wonder why we can't get out of one position to another because we have not walked before Him according to His commandment. We go all for the commandment. You say, well, I can take out three quarters and I can try to do the rest, but you gotta do it all. You can't change your word. 
and be right. Because if you do, then the curses will come upon you. Read it, Evelyn. Um, still in 17. And, yeah. shall, and shall observe. And you shall observe. My statutes. My statutes. And my judgment. And my judgment. 